What's up everyone? This is your boy Francis and welcome back to another video. Today, um, sorry I look like this, I look like a mess. I'm so exhausted because I've been um searching and doing stuff and just doing research. I just really want to know what's going on with this war and this conflict, and I just want to know the history because I really don't want to everybody asks pick a side, choose a side, why can't they? It's like for me, I really shouldn't because at the end of the day, war, nobody wins at the end because the innocents are they always the victim, like the ones who like innocent bystander. That's my that's my thing. The way I said it, because I have a kind of a little bit of like backstory to it, because I'm from West Africa, partly from Sierra Leone. And as a kid, I experienced war at its finest and and I lived through it. So when I say innocent, I mean like the innocent civilians around that are just in, caught in between the conflict. That's one. That's something that holds weight to me. But for me, I just want to educate myself, understand what's going on and how things are and what's going on. So I found this video of the history, the history of Israel and Palestine conflict. And I just really, really want to take it. Uh, Pretty much in-depth dive because this seems like it's more than a hundred years um, into this war and this conflict and it goes way back and I just found this video and I thought this might be the best video to explain this and I really hope everybody can just first before you judge or pick a side or do anything just listen and pay attention and for me, inform information is the best thing ever. It's one of those things that will help you based on things. I don't try to judge or jump on something when I don't know anything. So I'd rather educate myself before I go, if that makes sense. But yeah, if you guys enjoyed this, uh, smash the like button, uh, share it with other people so other people can also um, pretty much get informed with this and also get to know about this because it's crucial at this point we have we, we're an age where just what you hear in the news does is not enough you can do your own research also and stuff like that you can you can there's so much information online that you can actually pick like you have to make sure you cipher through it so that way the media don't biases or anything just the hard facts. That's all you need to know. Then, if you want, you can make your choices and your decision. Yeah, I've been rambling on for too long, but let's get straight to it. Israel, the world's only Jewish state, located east of the Mediterranean Sea, and Palestine, the territory of the Arab population that hails from the Israel-controlled land, have long mm. been known for their enduring conflict with the Israeli occupation of the West Bank and the Gaza Strip. The tension between Israel and Palestine has been deteriorating in years, climaxing with many violent clashes between the two sides. To understand the root of the Israel-Palestine conflict, we have to look back a few thousand years ago. There you go. Early history of Israeli-Palestinian conflict. In the 17 centuries BC, following the call of God, three patriarchs of the Jewish people, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, settled in Canaan, a region mm. approximating present-day Israel, the West Bank, and the Gaza Strip, parts of Lebanon, Syria, and Jordan. The region later had the name the Land of Israel, the Promised Land, the Palestine region, or the Holy Land. In 1000 BC, King Saul established the Israelite monarchy, which then was ruled by King David who made Jerusalem the capital of his kingdom, and his son King Solomon who built the first temple in Where's Jerusalem. King Solomon? After the death of King Solomon, the united monarchy was split into the Kingdom of Israel in the north, with Samaria as the capital and the Kingdom of Judah in the south, with Jerusalem as the capital. The land became home to a majority of Jews, but then it was subject to numerous conquests of various groups, leading to the significant decrease of the Jewish population on the land. Mm. One of these conquests was conducted by the Roman Empire, who gave the name Palestine to Judah, intending to break the Jewish connection with the land of Israel. During this time, Christianity, which started as a Jewish sect, ultimately became a dominant religion toward the end of the Roman Empire. In the 7th century came an Arab conquest, beginning the spread of Islam. 
The Dome of the Rock was built on the ruin of the Second Temple, making Jerusalem the holy city to three monotheistic religions, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam. After Christians in Jerusalem were intensely persecuted by the Seljuk Turks, a Central Asian empire with ambition to expand its territory, Christians in Europe launched several crusades to bring the holy city back to the hand of the Christians. During this time, many Jews were killed. Others were making pilgrimages everywhere, mostly in Western Europe. From the 16th century to World War I, the Holy Land, along with much of the Middle East, was ruled by the Ottoman Empire, an Islamic superpower. The land was unofficially called Palestine. At the same time in Europe, more and more Jews were joining a movement called Zionism, aiming to create a Jewish national state in its ancient homeland. Hence, in the first decade of the 20th century, tens of thousands of Jews moved from Europe back to the region. Israel and Palestine under the British rule. World War I exploded and ended with the collapse of the Ottoman Empire. Its land in the Middle East was carved by the British and French empires. The British then gave more independence for Iraq and Jordan, and the region remaining under the control of Britain was what it called the British Mandate for Palestine, where Britain promised to establish a Jewish national homeland under its Balfour Declaration, which went into effect in 1923. Tensions between the Jews and the Arabs who both claimed the land grew, which even led to acts of violence. By the 1930s, following the increasing Jewish population in Palestine due to the mm. fear of persecution during the Nazi reign in Germany, that the British sense. limited Jewish immigration. In response, the Jewish militias formed to both fight the Arabs and resist the British rule. Then came the Holocaust throughout Nazi Germany, which claimed almost six million Jewish lives. After the war, more and more Jews then fled from Europe to Palestine to seek a homeland, escalating the tension with the Arabs. Overwhelmed by the situation, Britain began to withdraw from the region. Of course. The birth of the Israel state. After World War II, the UN proposed a plan to partition Palestine into two independent states, a Jewish state and an Arab state, with the city of Jerusalem becoming an international zone with a special status. However, the plan according to which the Jewish, accounting for only one-third of the population, was granted more territory, 56.5% of the land, was rejected by the Arabs. They began to form volunteer armies throughout Palestine. Less than one year after that, as Britain completed its withdrawal from Palestine, Israel declared itself an independent state, marking a new, bloodier chapter in the struggle between the Jews and the Palestinian Arabs. The 1948 Arab-Israeli War Right after the announcement of an independent Israel, a war between the Arabs and the Jews broke out, which was known as the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The war involved five recently independent Arab nations, Egypt, Jordan, Iraq, Syria, and Lebanon, the mm. Arab League, who invaded the region in an attempt to establish a unified Arab Palestine. However, a ceasefire agreement was reached a year later, in which more than two-thirds of historic Palestine, including the West Jerusalem, belonged to Israel, while Jordan occupied East Jerusalem and the area known as the West Bank, and Egypt occupied the Gaza Strip. As a result, more than 750,000 Palestinians That's were expelled from the land where they lived for centuries on the day that they call Al-Nakba, or the Catastrophe. With the deteriorated Jeez. dispute between the Jews and the Arabs, there came more wars and fighting in the following decades. The Sixty Day War It was in 1967 when the Sixty Day War broke out. I thought this was a, a six day war. I read about this. Skirmishes between Israel Is this 60 or 6? States, Jordan, Syria. Let me know. Egypt. This brief war ended with the victory of Israel, giving Israel control over the Golan Heights from Syria, the West Bank and East Jerusalem from Jordan, and Gaza and the Sinai Peninsula from Egypt. Sinai was later returned to Egypt under the Egypt-Israel Peace Treaty. After the war, most Palestinian refugees and their descendants were not allowed to return to their homes, but had to live in Gaza, the West Bank, and neighboring Jordan, Syria, and Lebanon. The First Intifada and the Oslo Accords 
The rising number of Israelis settling in the Palestinian territories in the West Bank and Gaza gave rise to the PLO, the Palestinian Liberation Organization, first founded in Cairo, Egypt in 1964 to create a liberated Palestine in Israel. The PLO launched attacks on Israel from its base in Jordan. It was then forced to move from Jordan to Lebanon, starting to carry out acts of terrorism against Israel. Fighting went on for years, including the Israeli invasion of Lebanon to kick the PLO out of Beirut. The PLO eventually agreed to divide the land between Palestine and Israel, but there were still more and more Jewish settlers moved into the Israel-occupied Palestinian territories. In 1987, a violent Palestinian uprising was ignited, starting from the Jabalaya refugee camp after an Israeli Defense Forces truck collided with two Palestinian civilian vans, killing four of them. This was known as the First Intifada. This bloody conflict resulting in hundreds of deaths triggered a peace process with the signing of the Oslo Accords by Israel and the PLO, the Oslo I Accord signed in Washington, D.C., and the Oslo II Accord in Taba, Egypt. According to the Oslo Accords, the West Bank was divided into three areas. Area A was exclusively controlled by the Palestinians. Area B was controlled by both the Palestinians and Israel. Area C was fully controlled by Israel. The Second Intifada. That was 1987, so how long did that Though last? further peace talks continued in 2000, uh, 2000, the Israelis and Palestinians could not reach agreements on issues like the status of Jerusalem, rights of refugees, and the increased Jewish settlement in Palestinian lands. Ariel Sharon, a Jewish Israeli who would later become Israel's Prime Minister, visited the Temple Mount, home to the Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem. The action was deemed offensive by many Palestinians, and the Second Intifada broke out. The violence ended with Israel's withdrawal from Gaza, but continued to settle in the West Bank. Israel Conflict with Hamas Hamas is a Sunni Islamist militant group aiming to destroy the state of Israel and create an Islamic state. After the armed conflict between Hamas and Fatah, who managed the PLO, Hamas split from the Palestinian Authority and gained power in the Gaza. Israel put Gaza under a suffocating blockade, leading to several bloody wars between the two groups in the Gaza Strip, including Operation Cast Lead, Operation Pillar of Defense, and Operation Protective Edge. In 2014, Hamas and Fatah reached agreement to form a national unity government. In 2018, the U.S. Embassy was relocated from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem, which was deemed by the Palestinians as a signal of American support for Jerusalem as Israel's capital. Mm. 2021, the conflict between Israel and Palestine was reassumed by a series of hostile events in East Jerusalem, leading to several acts of violence until a ceasefire deal brokered by Egypt, Qatar, and the United Nations came into effect on May 21st. Peaceful though it may seem now, the complex and long-lasting territorial dispute between two states is a ticking time bomb that can explode any time. You're saying that because it's happening right now. Okay, that's a lot of history. That is a lot. I am so glad that like, that makes me very much just informed and really really just know what's going on if you guys have anybody else that needs to watch this please show them this before they even even someone open their mouth out of just spite and anger or anything like that inform know that let knows first before you say anything know something before you say anything um but yeah um I was very informed. That was very good. Um, I really like it. It's very simple, very clear explanation, and it gets straight to the point. That it's just facts, no opinion within it. It's just facts telling you details and stuff. So, which I genuinely enjoy. I hope you guys enjoy it too. That's gonna be the end of the video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, you know, share this video because it'll be nice for everybody else to like know about it. All right, peace out.